this is the first workshop that an artwork comes to. We, the first thing we do is make a mould of something, um, which and, and Barry's work would have been done years ago, so the moulds are a lot older. This is a newer section of a mould um, that we've just had to redo because the mould was so old. Um, so the first thing that we do is coat the original object that the artist has provided in a silicon rubber, um, which is this white section. It is quite thick so that we can, it can be manipulated, it can be used uh, repeated times and, um, and when, we're, when we're pulling a wax out of it, it can be moved quite easily. So it's quite robust. And the first layer of rubber that we put onto the object, onto the sculpture, is really thin. It's really crucial that we pick up the, the, the finer details of the works, like these bits. They're the, the artist's touch on the work, so that's really important for us to capture. And then we back that with two more layers of silicon, and that makes it this thickness, so it's nice and robust. And we attach these keys onto the back. These keys are important for the next product that we apply to be locked into place. So this is a resin and fiberglass jacket that supports the rubber shape. So it locks into place so that when we paint or pour a wax into this mould, it's well supported and keeps the original shape. Just locks into place. So this mould is a two-piece mould. These two sections come back together like so. So it's quite, it's quite sturdy. We've drilled holes in it so that there can be nuts and bolts drilled through and squeezing the rubber incredibly tight so that you don't get seam lines. So where the, the two pieces join together, you'll get a little bit of extra wax that seeps through the edges. And that's something that we take out in the wax once it's come out as a, a whole wax piece. Um, so in here, we'll paint or pour a wax into it, which is what you see over here. This green wax is our high quality wax. It picks up all of that detail. It's a lot thinner than the brown wax. Um, and that's the, throughout the whole process, is really important that we keep all of that detail. So what um, Flanagan's intended on his original piece, that we are still maintaining that throughout the process. All of the marks that you've seen in the mould, all of these lines, are still in it. Um, you can also see, so it's about two or three millimetres of green wax, and then we back it with a brown wax. So that's for us aiming for a specific thickness that we want the bronze to eventually be. Um, and that brown line that goes down the edge is where it's seeped in for the seam lines. Um, but these black dots on it, are where we're planning, eventually planning for these runners and rises. So you can see that it's hollow inside. So we've aimed for at least five millimeter thick of wax, and that's what we want the bronze to eventually be to. This section here, has been cut out of the top. And that is so that in the next step of the process, um, the, ceramic dry, the ceramic shell can dry. So you just need a lot of air space. So the ceramic shell can be poured in and it can come out and have the airflow. So once we've got a wax that we've taken out of the mold, we do the finishing so that seam line will be taken care of. And then we make it look like the original object if there was any, any slight alterations in it where you might get a tiny little air bubble in it um, because the wax when we paint it in is 130 degrees. So you can get tiny little air bubbles trapped in it. Then this red system is called a running up system or spurring up system 
People call it different things. So there's runners and risers and a cup. That's the three elements that you need to make it work. Um, so if you imagine this piece upside down, so we're planning how the bronze is going to get into the original object. How are we going to cast a bit of green wax? There's a lots of positives and negatives. So to start with, the, the artist has a positive object and we make a negative space of that object, which is the mould. We then make another positive, so we make the wax object. And the next step is to make a negative space again. So we cover this entire object in a ceramic shell. The wax gets melted out and you have a negative space within a ceramic, which the bronze gets poured into. But that bronze can't be poured into it unless it's got a system in place to get it into that job. So it works upside down. This cup ends up acting as a funnel. These central pieces of wax are runners. And the outside ones are called risers, and that's where the air can escape. So the runners are where the bronze runs into the actual object. So they're feeding directly into the piece that you want cast. And then the air, so the bronze travels through the object and escapes through the risers, which is why it works upside down. So with gravity, <laughs> bronze. Bronze pours down through the tubes, through the main tubes, through the object, and then escapes back up out of the tubes. So that's the main bit of planning that we have to do in this workshop. So this is the next step of the process, is that every object comes down to this workshop. It's called the shell shop. It's called shelling. This tank is essentially a liquid ceramic. Um, it's continuously turned because otherwise it solidifies in there. Um, every object that comes down has about 12 coats of this applied. The first couple of layers are really fine. There are a lot thinner versions of this. We sift, uh, sieve it out and sieve any uh, bits, of, uh, bits that have already been set out of there. Um, and they get poured or painted onto each wax object. So that's the first step. The second step is that a very fine version of this grit, which is in these buckets. So you have a really fine liquid followed by a really fine dusting of fused silica for the first couple of layers. And then you just use what's in the tank and what's in these um, trays. So this happens on repeat for about two weeks. Every object comes downstairs, it gets dunked in here, and it goes into this giant airing cupboard. This dries it off and keeps the wax cool whilst it's waiting for its next step. Then it comes back around and repeat for yeah, approximately two weeks. So this is the cooling cabinet. Everything has it. So essentially you want to, each layer of the ceramic shell to bond to each other very well every time you reapply. So it comes in here to dry off and then it's ready for its next coat. These pieces are about halfway through their process. So you can already see that it's quite built up, it's quite thick already. Um, so that's everything, that's the actual object that you want cast and all of the runners and risers that are all being coated in the ceramic shell. Once all of the layers of ceramic have been applied, they, it gets de-waxed. So every object gets stacked into our kiln at the back of the room and gets melted. The wax gets melted down at 700 degrees for approximately half an hour. So objects get stacked in here and uh, the fire bricks are taken out so that we can catch the wax in the bottom in the tray, which is under here. See sections of wax that have been melted out of each piece. Once that's happened, it comes out of here. It gets reinforced. Sometimes when the, the ceramic's been fired the first time, you might see like hairline cracks in it, and that gets reinforced. We use a, a thicker version of that ceramic um, to, we call it a putty. So it's quite a gloopy version, and we, we stick it around the edges of things or, or like on the cracks or wherever we think that there might be a weak spot. 
then it comes back into the kiln. It gets its final firing, which is 900 degrees. It's, the, it's when the few silica, because it's few silica particles within the, within the tank and the grit that we apply, those few silica particles convert into a ceramic at that temperature, which makes each shell um, st- strong enough to withhold the pressure and the temperature of the bronze being poured into it. And that's what's waiting in here, is sections of sculpture that are... They've been, the wax has started to be melted out, so they've taken the cup out. It needs to go back in here to be fully melted out. The, this whole pit will be emptied. So it gets emptied into giant buckets and the, the shells that have been fired, so when they're wiped, they're ready to go. So that's had its final firing. They get buried in this pit with the cup at the top ready for the bronze to be poured into it. These are what the crucibles are held by. The crucibles are here. These are the crucibles. So whilst they're um, cooling off, they're put upside down. So it's just uh, like a a long soup bowl, I would say. Um, And these are our bronze ingots. So this is what we melt down. get a smaller one so if we're doing a full tank those ingots get um, stacked we want to melt as much as we can at one time so we we fill the tank with bronze which gets to about 1100 degrees throughout the day so our, our foreman of this workshop melts everything down starting from about 8, eight or 9 a.m. and we pour it about 3 p.m. So it takes a lot, quite a long time to get it up to that temperature. They hold the bearers either side of this pit and they, whilst they're waiting, they kind of like they rest the poles on their thighs because they're so heavy. And this whole tank moves up like this. So the spout pretty much stays in the same position. There's someone controlling this little stick here which controls the whole tank. So the whole tank moves, and um, Mick, who's normally stood in front of it, he'll say how much he wants. So I, I, I'd be watching him to, say, to see how much bronze is coming, and he'll, and he'll say stop. It's a very controlled, very well choreographed event, the pour. It's very hot. Everyone's wearing uh, respirators, goggles, leather gear. Very well choreographed. Um, so it pours out. They wait here for it to be poured and then they all shuffle down to the pit where it's ready to be poured so all of the shells will be waiting here we tend to wait 24 hours for the bronze to cool but you can probably take it out earlier than that essentially any big pieces get hoisted from that end of the workshop all the way down to here and this is where we do knocking out very (laughs) self-explanatory Um, we use a hammer and a chisel, and as we hit onto the bronze, it knocks off the ceramic shell. Um, and any finer bits, then we get a tiny little chisel in, or we leave it so that we sandblast it instead. Some areas are quite delicate, so you don't want to be too harsh with it. Um, and then we carry it into the metal workshop. So this is what the bare bronze looks like when it's not been touched. All the runners and risers have been cut off, which is called fettling. And so you can see like stubby areas like this. Um, these areas here are where they've been fed. All of that gets chopped off. It gets sandblasted to get rid of the majority of the ceramic shell and then it's ready for a more experienced metal worker to pick it up. And these tools like this, which stand in front of that. Um, it's just an air tool, rotating air tool, <laughs> like a dentist tool. Um, and we have larger ones as well for larger, larger bits. So say we've got a couple of sections that have been welded together um, and you want to chase it back so that any excess metal that you've added through welding you want to chase it back with finer detail. And these, these tools enable us to be able to recreate that de- detail through comparing it to the original and through pictures. 
larger pieces might have fittings and fixings attached to the base or um, depending on where it's going it might need um, to be attached to the ground or any of those extra things they happen to the bronze we we add them to the bronze before it's been patinated so patination is the process of colouring the work so Barry's got a very specific patina that he likes and it's quite a, a greeny black so it's got a bit of a green base to it um, so we apply the chemical which has been diluted in water either with a paintbrush or by spraying it on um, and you can accelerate the process through heat so you might use a blowtorch once you've got to your desired colour and it's cooled off then you wax it to seal that colour in and then once it's been waxed you can give it a buff which shines it up slightly and um, I think probably enhances that, that depth colour in so this piece has been patinated and been waxed already and it's pretty much ready to go it's done